The Fujicast is an independent loading zone production. On the day of recording this, Kev is still, as I am, <laughs> sorry Kev, I, I was always going to say it's just it's me as well. We're still consuming the, um, the remnants of the fridge from Christmas over New Year. And then today, New Year's Day, if you're listening to this on the day it was intended, it's a line in the sand, Kev, isn't it? It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new year. Yeah, it needs to be. I'm like a massive walrus. Come on, then. What what did you what did you consume over over Christmas? What, oh, everything, <laughs> all of it, and all my neighbours' stuff as well. Oh no! Oh, yeah. Kev, that's rude. Every, all the houses. I just went around all the houses like Santa Claus delivering presents. I just went around their houses eating all their stuff and drinking all their stuff. <laughs> got any mince pies? Got any cheese? Got any cheese? Got any pickle to go with that? You aren't that sort of rude neighbour, surely? You don't go around raiding people's cupboards do you but yeah you about three in the morning when i've run out <laughs> hello joe, 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 it's kev have you got any uh have you got any i don't know just like a bit of brandy anything i do any of that oh you know, kev so please new- even if i have to so so new so new year resolutions then uh, I, I'm not a big, I don't, the word resolution for me is like homework. It's like, have it on my desk by Monday, Jeeves, but um, plans and stuff, I can do that. So what What are your, I think most of your plans are health related, aren't they? Because now you've retired, you're just sitting there with your legs up anyway. <laughs> I'm retired, stop saying that. <laughs> so, so what are your new year plans then? Yeah, all kind of health related, oh. judo, sport. That kind of stuff, get myself back in. I've done all my coaching stuff now, so I need to earn my stripes as a coach. Ah. Um, and, yeah, last year was a bit of a mix, wasn't it? Because, you know, I'm spending a lot of time in Wales, Dad, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Then this is a, yeah, as you said, it's a line drawn in the sand. No more mince pies. No more mince pies. Actually, there's a, there's this really funny guy who's very good on Instagram called Eddie Abu. And... <laughs> <laughs> like he'll walk into he'll go into like greg's for example and yeah. he'll just pick up one of their pasties while he's in there filming and he'll just go this see this this is shit. this is just full of sugar and no you can't <laughs> just, do that he just he just <laughs> absolutely goes into mark everything uh, you know but i mean he's very extreme he essentially says the only thing you can eat in, in life is eggs but he uh he's very 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 funny his name must be on the door of every single every single pub, every single baker's, every single news, whatever. Don't let this man in. He's very funny. But he, the message he says is true. So ultimately, his his ultimate message is to try and only eat natural things, i.e. things with one ingredient in. Mm. So, you know, like chicken or egg or avocado or, you know, if you if you pick up something and you look and it says, you know, pie or whatever and on the back of it is 75 different ingredients half of which are you know scientific names then it's just not good for you and you know and he's, he says it's the same for things like low-fat yogurts and all that kind of stuff if you just look on the back and you'll see all they've done is they've replaced the what was the fat with yeah, dextrose and stuff, this and that yeah. and blah 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 it's it's a it's an admirable um ethos will you share that instagram account with us put it in the show notes i will that'll yeah. start everybody in the right way Enjoy your, enjoy your carrots, everyone. The Fuji Cast. Welcome to 2024, the Fuji Cast. Me, Kev, you, your letters, your emails, your Facebook posts, and our new friend, Eddie Abu. <laughs> I've just looked him up. My word. Don't oh, eat sugar. Oh, dear. I've, we've got a cupboard full of this stuff. That's the one thing I want to change for next year, Kev. I'm going to say to people, don't don't give me sugar for Christmas. It's almost like, here, have some lard. And it's not really a very good present, is it? it it's because there's a cupboard full of it. There's a cupboard, there's a, almost a cupboard for me, cupboard for the kids. It's almost like the mother-in-law is fattening me up for something. <laughs> yeah. Not. But, you know, the, you've also got to, you've got to have a life, haven't you? You've got to enjoy life. There's, no, there's absolutely no point just eating eggs all your life. Not if you're ready, Abu. That's a, I mean, what's this? He's eating for, for breakfast. My first meal today, feta cheese and what looks like six or seven eggs. Oh, uh, you'll have, yeah, you'll have, like, I think one day he might eat two dozen eggs. My mum would have said, he must be bound up, that boy, must be yeah, bound, bound up. You wouldn't want to spend the night in bed with him, would you? <laughs> 
Oh, moving on. Right, if you'd like to write into the show, uh, our email address remains for 2024. Click at fujicast.co.uk. If you are sending... Uh, how are we doing for uh, for Facebook stuff, Kev? Because it looked a bit thin before Christmas, but things always look a bit... Well, well yeah, physical. I mean, we've got to forgive them, haven't we? Because yeah. it, it was crimbo time and they, you know, people were on holidays and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we have one two days ago. And then prior to that, Nothing. was November. Oh, really? No, can't be. Yeah. That's, you, that's you just not keeping an eye on it, surely. No, I'm looking at it right now. I think it's time for me to put a fresh post at the top. I, I say so. that every yeah. episode. You've said that for two years. It's New Year resolution, New Year plan. Um, that's it. That's my New Year's resolution. Yeah. Create a new pinned post at the top of the Facebook group for new fresh questions. There we go. New fresh questions, more judo, and look like Eddie Abu. Yeah. If not, eat like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a real problem looking like him, but I definitely would try to eat like him. Do you, bit. Do you think the bus has departed the, the, the station? I turn- think, yeah, <laughs> bear in mind, he's, I think he's 60 and he's got a body like a he looks 22-year-old Olympian. <laughs> Ex-bodybuilding champ. Nice guy, qualified psychiatric nurse. I mean, he, he, is, he has contributed to life in all sorts of ways. You've got to watch his stuff, honestly. I'm going to uh, now. I think he's got a new fan in me. You've, uh, as I said, it's the only <laughs> it's the only Instagram person that I watch. The what they call them, the, the reels, reels, the, the reels. Big little videos that pop yeah. up. I, I because they make me laugh. And actually, at the end of it, I go, God, he was right. <laughs> he's so right. <laughs> as I another bottle of wine, thanks, Gemma. That yeah, 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 yeah. was really right. You know, you want to listen more to him. <laughs> Um, right, just two bits of housekeeping before we start with your questions and thoughts and comments and stuff. First of all, thank you to Pick Time for sp- continuing to sponsor the show. They've been stalwart this year with us, Kev. They really have. And, they have indeed. And, and thank you very much to them. If you go to pick-time.com and enter, if you're joining, the word Fujicast, all uppercase, we always say that, not sure if it makes any difference, then you get one month free, one month of goodness free. And what is Pick Time for? Over to you, Kev. Uh, for us, as professional social wedding photographers, it's a great place to host our images, yep. deliver the gallery. They get a beautiful looking gallery for the clients. They can automatically create uh, uh, photo films, blog posts, all of that good stuff. But if you're if you're not a uh, you know professional photographer like us, maybe you just have some prints to sell. Then you can use the art galleries yeah. um, section, which yeah. is what I'm actually currently in the middle of you wow. setting up myself on my website to sell individual prints and they can be uh, drop shipped to yourself. So you want to sign them, you can do that, or you can have the lab send them straight away. Uh, it's just a, a you know wonderful system that we've both used now for, I don't know, like four or five years, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, been with them a long, long Certainly. time. I can't remember. I mean, I was with Zenfolio before, who I liked, but I didn't think that it looked half as attractive as the galleries on Pick Time. And yeah, of course, there's other options out there, but but yeah. no, I think you know if we were to do a, a a sample of the wedding photography industry, at least I would say a vast majority of them are now using Pick Time for so? their their gallery systems. You know, yeah. automatic plugins to Lightroom, so you just upload the images yeah. directly from your edits. Yeah. Just just works. There's a really really strong community in the Facebook group as well. And yeah, people, some people do go in there and go, I can't get it to work. You know, usually it's either a very simple thing or, you know, in there is the, uh, is the community moderators, the people who work on the support desk for pick time. So yeah, yeah. it's all, it's a very, very, very good piece of software. What's the difference then between an art gallery and having something where you're selling art prints and a normal gallery? It's, it's just, that's just in a name, isn't it, Kev? No. Oh, so an art gallery is where you would, it looks different, it integrates different, you just embed the, the um, code into your uh, Squarespace or WordPress website, etc. Right. And it's more designed for people who want a simple way of selecting, you know, fine art, limit. you can do limited editions, you yep. can tell it there's only 25 um, editions of this print and it will automatically count them down and all of that kind of stuff. So no, it's definitely aimed at people uh-huh. who are selling prints to individual clients rather than downloads, gallery downloads, photo films, lo- large volume images that, you know, you wouldn't have, for example, you don't have, you could technically, but you wouldn't um, like have an option for a book or an album or something like that. It's right. usually one image, well, not one image, but a section of images with, you know, print size 
and you know whether you want it framed or not and that kind of thing and the really good thing is that wherever you are in the world it will come from your local lab mm-hmm. um so that's good well as long as you set it up for that yeah yep. Yep. so thank you pick time right next we need to just give a not a glance so much of a glancing mention but a hearty mention for our uh, our event, Kev, second of Mar- Saturday, second of March this year, we are at the House of Photography in London's very trendy Covent Garden area at the Fujifilm House of Photography. We are hosting a day where there are four speakers. There's you, there's me, uh, there's Emily Renier, and there's going to be Mr. Whisper as well talking about streets. So Emily's talking about weddings and social photography. Mr. Whisper about street photography. You're talking about business. I'm talking about sound and photography together. Um, It's like four workshops. And the price of four workshops, Kev, is? Well, currently it's £80 Mm -hmm. because we're still on the early bird. Um, But that will go up to £90 at the end of January. Yep. So, uh, yeah, get in there quick. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're going to do a live recording of the podcast at the end of the day. I forgot that bit. Yes, we're doing that as well. And Andreas is talking. Andreas and the team will be there so you can chat to them, touch and try all of their goodies. Do you (laughs) Um, you think there might be some new stuff to touch and try? There may well be. I don't know. Mm. The beginning of, yeah, Mm -hmm. that that kind of first Mm -hmm. first quarter of a year is often when Fujifilm release new stuff. So there may well be new things for you to get your grubby mitts on. But yeah, we will be, you know, we'll have the whole upstairs of the House of Photography, Uh the mezzanine floor, as they they like to call it. To ourselves for the whole day, there will be drinks and nibbles. And then once everything's done and uh, we'll all go off to the pub while you're tidying up the cables and putting your speakers back in the car <laughs> yes. and all that kind of stuff. I'll buy Normally you all happens. Well, don't. No, don't. Because Eddie Abu, my new friend, would I'll say... I'll buy you an egg then. No, buy me an egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you a boiled egg, two boiled eggs. No, make it ten. <laughs> I tell yeah, you so what. Saturday, second of March. Yeah. Uh House of Photography in London, Common Garden. Yeah, and we've we've tentatively said midday to around about seven PM. Yeah. Uh, but those times may vary. Well, it won't it won't start any earlier. But I would imagine we'll kind of be mingling around midday. Yeah. First talk probably about one ish. Looking forward to it. Right. Questions and stuff. Um, oh, by the way, in well, order for them to, to get tickets, we need to tell them that. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need so, to go. Just the important There, there will be a link. There will be a link, of yeah, course, in the yeah, show notes. Yeah. But um, you need to go to my website, which mm. is uk. Click the uh, under four photographers. There's a uh, physical workshops area. It's the one at the top. It's got the big Fujicast logo. You can't miss it. £80 and, uh, and you've got a seat. But how many seats are left, Kev? I would say we have uh, around about 15 places left. So you want to hurry up? Get in, as they say. Right. uh, Questions and thoughts. It's more thoughts and comments and conversational points, really, um, to to start the year with. Have you you got... Well, let's go for the latest one that came in, Kev. In in your time-honoured... What do you call it? Tradition. Time-honoured tradition. Ian Gates, two days ago, listening to the latest podcast and heard your shorter question. So here's one. (laughs) Other than the obvious difference in form factor, would an X-T5 be better than an X-H1 in every way? Or are there any scenarios where the older camera would still be the better choice? Versus the uh, X-T5. I mean, I'd go for the X-T5 every single time, wouldn't you? I know you would. Well, yeah. I mean, I suppose the the question's a little worded a little bit cautiously, isn't it? It says, would an X-T5 be better than an X-H1 in every way? Oh, right. Well, in many ways, the answer is no, no, probably. But in many ways, yes. I think that the X-H1, well, I never really had an X-H1, so I don't know, but you did, didn't you? Um, Yeah. Didn't it have a? No, we didn't what? have an XLR jack. It didn't have an XLR. No, 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 no. It was no, more no, geared no. up towards filming it, in yeah, some capacity. Yeah. But the XT5 also is probably better for filming. Well, yeah. Uh, are there any scenarios where the older camera would still be the better choice? Well, um, I'm not sure. Better choice would be the right way to term it. But obviously, if the older camera does what you need it to do, then it's it's the better choice because you a you've got it b it's cheaper c it does does it already so there's no need to get an xc5 but if you feel like you want the you know the super fast autofocus or the probably better filming capabilities you know the bigger sensor the 40 megapixel sensor you know the all of that jiggery pokery gubbins stuff that's in there then then yeah i mean the xc5 is a better camera but 
you know, if the XH1 does what it needs to do, then absolutely don't spend your shekels on, well, depend, on a new yeah, ga- camera. Depends what you're using it for as well. There are times when I make choices, Kev, in terms of going out just to enjoy using a camera where I think, hmm, my, my X100V, which is my absolute champion camera, goes everywhere with me. Well, except the times where I think, you know what, today I might just take the X-Pro1 out um because i really enjoy using it and that's the that's the thing about that camera you enjoy using it you know that it's not anywhere as good as an x100v in any way shape or form but it's fun to use yeah absolutely yeah Mm. here we go um adam crook i appreciate you may be trying to stick with the online world but perhaps on a certain periodic basis you could create small zines of your work for your supporters I'm not sure who this is aimed at. Not not sure if our contact Ooh. details are included. Ah, oh, he's one of our he's one of our um, um, Patreon members. Oh yes, we love Patreon members. Mm. You can find us on Patreon, by the way. Just search for Foodcast yeah. for the price of a coffee. You can help us start saving for next year's Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. and my eggs. Yeah. yeah, we're going to need to buy a lot of eggs if we're going with Eddie's Eddie's plan for the year. You're going to be bound up. You are uh, Kev by the end of the year bound up. Is that something only mums used to say? Bound up. <laughs> I've I've never, never used to say it. No, but it was, uh, it was, it was a mum thing in our fan. Bound up, you will be. Don't eat too many of those. In terms of zines, they wouldn't need to be overly curated, but perhaps nice to have something physical. He's right. I mean, I, I do. I'm doing. I wrote my my first ebook before Christmas, which is out. But in terms of and where, how can people get that? Well, come uh, on. Can we leave and a link? I've taught you these things yeah, for years and years and years. <laughs> Let me tell you then. You can go to um, the, uh, you can go to photowalk dot show photowalk dot show, and there's a very easy link up the top. Guess what the link is called, Kev? Eggs. No book. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then then there's a synopsis. It shows you a few of the pages. There's some pictures at the bottom which are included in the book, and then a handy little button which takes you to a place to buy it. Ten pounds. I had a I had a nasty synopsis once. I had to go to the doctors. Did you? Did you get it sorted? Yeah, yeah they sorted it. Ten pounds. That's very reasonable. Yeah, I've seen it. It's very good. Well, in terms of zines and stuff, I intend to do a bit of that myself this year. I really enjoyed writing, Kev. I think it's a muscle not a lot of people sort of engage with, isn't it? The, the writing part. Yeah, I like writing. Yeah. Uh, you wrote a book, the X one, the original X one hundred book. I've still got it unsigned. I'm still waiting for you to sign it, Kev. <laughs> it might be worth something one day. What about it though, Kev? Some some zines of ours with stuff. Uh, done? I hate the word zine. It Do you not brings like me it? Out in synopsis? Does it? <laughs> right. yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. zines. People... But a mini magazine. Well, that's what a zine is. You see, you don't have to say magazine. It's like yes, you and your mini silent... magazine. But it's like it's silent like letters. Hogs. It's like silent letters, Kev. Silent, yeah, what a waste of space. Yeah, exactly. So you don't need to say MAGA, make America great again, if, no. <laughs> if you've got just zines. No, because it is a magazine. A zine, oh, no. Right. It's like TOG. You don't like TOG. I know you don't like TOG. People who say TOG, get off my world. <laughs> and I know you're one of them. <laughs> I have used TOG from time to time. What's the matter with it, Kev? Oh, uh, we're not TOGs. A TOG is the, is the strength of your bed. Or something. <laughs> no, that's no, no. Tog is the warmth in your in your yeah, very expensive. Well, exactly. I'm not a duvet. No, <laughs> or a dovet, as my mum used to call it. <laughs> You'll get bound up in that dovet. You will bound up. All right. Yeah. So uh, uh, maybe, w- yeah, maybe, maybe we, maybe we could do something like that. Well, put it in the may- maybe file just over there. Go on, your turn. Oh God, now I've got to go back a long way. Here's trouble. Oh, right. Uh, no. Oop, bump, bump. Um, what was that? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm going back 10 whole weeks. Now, usually, I'd like you to know. last Christmas. Usually, I edit all that, that sort of procrastinating sound uh, away, but I want you to appreciate just how far Kev is having to go back in time for these. Stu Hathorn, mm. 10 weeks ago. Ooh. Hi, guys. Whatever happened to yada, yada, yada? <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, so yada, yada, I used to say yada, yada, yada when people used to say, love the show, yeah. it's great, blah, 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 blah. Yada, 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 because it was very common for people to start questions with, you know, platitudes to us. But now nobody gives us platitudes. Well, nobody gives you messages. Nobody gives us messages <laughs> or platitudes. <laughs> so anyway, 
Yada, yada, yada. Hi, guys. Yada, yada, yada. Not that that's my question, but this is it. Apart from camera equipment and enthusiasm, what are the essentials that you must have before you start each photography job? Insurance and a contract, no doubt, but anything else? What, what, do, you, what do you have? What do you mean? What do you put in your kit you bag? You need to or? have, apart from uh, insurance and a contract, all of that kind of stuff. What, what else is important? A good attitude. Yeah, what he said, enthusiasm. Um, yeah. So apart from enthusiasm, I don't know. I mean, that, again, that's a, that is a tricky question for this early in the year. It's doing my, it's, it's doing my yeah. boiled eggs in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Over to you. All right. <laughs> Well, I was going to say attitude would be, and I know you said enthusiasm. Attitude's really important. And I, I confidence. Know conf, confidence is real. Yeah. But ability. You, you need to have the ability to do the job. How do you deal with things like imposter syndrome, Kev? Because I, I think it's something that, because that, that comes down to confidence, doesn't it? And I think even many, many years into photographing or doing whatever you do in life, I still hear it's amazing the amount of professional people, and this will go for musicians, pop stars, those those sort of people, who still suffer from incredible and sometimes debilitating imposter syndrome. How do you get over that with the confidence? Because you've got to step out the door with confidence. I remember Jeff Askoff used to say that he had to take his first... Now, this is... um, a name we haven't used for a, a couple of months now, but he, he was a photographer that we followed a lot, wasn't he, Kev? We went to his workshops and stuff. Yeah. The, the sort of foremost photojournalist in terms of weddings in the UK yeah. at one stage. He, I remember him saying that he also suffered from, I don't think he suffered from confidence because he was a, you know, a very professional, very adept man when it came to you know, wrangling a, a camera at a wedding. But he did say that he had, he just had to get over that slight speed bump in the road. And um, that first frame at any wedding would do it for him. Up to that moment, there was a slight feeling of, <gasps> wasn't there? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we all, we all, I mean, this, this question is meandering into this idea of nervousness and all that kind of stuff before a, a shoot. But, you know, we're also coming at it from the point of view of the wedding photographer and, you know, not everybody is a wedding photographer. No. And for some people, it's just a functional thing, you know, set up the camera, click, whatever. It depends on what you're doing, doesn't it? You know, like I do some commercial work that absolutely has no real no. Uh, art involved. I mean, there's there's understanding and, and technical knowledge needed, but, but I wouldn't say there's any art. And so there's no real nerves in terms of, will I get it right? Um, but, yeah, we all, we all, you know, if you are a, any kind of artist, I guess you do often uh, you know worry I, I had a conversation with somebody just yesterday or the day before i, I have no idea what day of the week it is at the minute but it's monday um, today well the day that this is going out is monday could be a different yeah, day okay, whenever you're so listening. sometime last week <laughs> <had a> conversation <laughs> with somebody when i was about, in the fog of eating other people's stuff in their kitchens about um imposter syndrome yeah. and you know how, how pretty much everybody has it you know and and yeah. it's and and it, you know it transpired, and I have again I have this conversation several times with people that I'm, I'm kind of teaching is, you know where what's the worry and the worry you know we drill down to it and usually it's what other photographers are going to think mm. of their work, um, you know and that's completely rubbish and just not necessary because who cares what other photographers think of your work, it's what clients think of your work that is the most important thing, um, and you know we see it on Instagram a lot you know. A lot, but quite a bit. Where people, you can tell that their Instagram posts are aimed at, uh, you know, the, it's it's what I call ego posts. You know, hum- humble bragging, humble bragging. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. And and that's pointless, really. You know, because it's, you know, why? What's the point? You know, and and I suppose to a certain extent, we all, you know, know that when we put things online, whether that's social media or a website, that other photographers will look at it and yeah of course we would love them all to go hey kev that's amazing <laughs> um but the fact is they don't they won't and you know a vast majority of people who think that hey kev that's <laughs> are not going to tell you that um because they're kind and and art and um, photography is very subjective so they have every right to think i don't like that um but i you know you should not uh, worry about those kind of things you shouldn't worry about what other photographers are going to think um, and I guess that's that kind of imposter syndrome that we, you know, we can kind of talk about. We, gone, yeah. like, like that's, we, we're not talking about anything that he asked. No, no, uh, yeah, but it's okay to meander <laughs> onto different subjects because I think confidence is one of those things. And if you walk out the door thinking, it's actually this is relevant. If you walk out the door thinking, all right, 
can I do this as well as X? And then that 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 is a debilitating way to start your day. And I think a lot of people do do that, particularly creatives do that. Certainly, photographers do that. So I think it is actually quite relevant that one. Uh, over and above what you take out in your kit bag and have your insurance and make sure you you're filled up with petrol and you've left early enough. Oh, that's the other yeah. thing. Is that a small? Th- I suppose that could be an important thing of when you what, what you take to work. Well, it's not really what you take to work. If I, if yeah, I, well, you, you never know what's going to happen. Do you see those poor houses that got tornado did? Yeah, in Manchester. I did, yeah, Miami. yeah, yeah. I, we we drove to Wales on Christmas Day, or, or was it Christmas Eve? I can't remember. Christmas now. Eve. Anyway, okay. I know your diary better Eve. than you do. Christmas Eve. We went to my mum and dad's Christmas Eve and Gemma's mum's on Christmas Day. But yeah. so Christmas Eve, my word, it was gusty, like <laughs> the Seven Bridge. Woo hoo! Did you see that plane coming? Did you see that plane coming down at Heathrow from yeah, from, from yeah. Big Jet, whatever that guy's name is? And he was like, "Oh no, no, is that no, go, no, no, no!" He was getting truly concerned for this American Airlines aircraft. It must have bounced about three times. But there was a better one. There was a better video than that, that? which was also briefly on the BBC, and it was a uh, Aer Lingus prop plane landing at <laughs> Bristol. <laughs> oh my word! I mean, he went round three times, and he landed basically completely sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a no that that is a skill yeah it is a skill yeah i think we sort of answered that one and we've yeah, sort of gone really a, go, we? well we did we did kev um leave early enough make sure you pack clean underpants oh take spare trousers that was something that paul rogers always used to tell me after after he'd uh, been doing a few portraits he got into a rather what we might call athletic position and split his trousers right from front, right round to the back. And um, and had to spend the whole day like that. So from that moment on, he always took spare trousers. <laughs> Take a spare shirt. But... <laughs> okay, spare shirt as well. I read, I read so, um, something really interesting um, uh, about social... Have you ever heard of Rachel Pedersen? Um, uh, don't think so. It doesn't ring a bell. Anyway, she's a, um, she's a, stro- a social strategist, drinks reception. And she had this three by three social strategy for hashtags, and she mentioned how people use Instagram. Uh, and one of the one of the most important things that she suggested was one of your first hashtags, and don't over hashtag it. That's something you're very keen on. Is who you serve, not who you are. And I thought that was a really interesting first um, hashtag thought when it comes to if you want to appeal to people who you serve not who you are it's not all about you it's about how you can help other people and I thought that was a really nice strategy for Instagram and it yeah, is absolutely. It, it's very easy sometimes as well on that uh, thing about um, just very briefly again about um, imposter syndrome I've been um, redesigning my I'm sort of doing it live I, I thought the best thing for me to do was to do it live and actually make the pages live as I'm redesigning them, which I know you'd probably say, what? But actually it's driving me to do it. And as I was doing it, I started looking up a few other people that do food photography, people, you know, commercial portraits and stuff. And I had to stop myself, Kev, because I got this big dose of, oh, who are you kidding? When you look at other people's work and you look at your own. It's a very dangerous thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I tell you what, though, uh, you mentioned that kind of social strategist and and then you said about the, um, you know, posting your pages live as you're going along kind of thing. There's there's this thing called the five second rule by so Mel Robbins is a massive inspiration speaker or whatever. And the five second rule. Now, honestly, you don't need to buy the book. You don't need to listen to the podcast. you You don't need to look at the videos or anything. Essentially, what it says is count down from five backwards to one before you make any big decision or any decision really, and and then action it. And and actually, it's a very very good. I'm, I say don't buy the book. That's a that's a say, that's a, a, that's a be, cruel thing to do, really, because be ultimately I read the book. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought the theory behind it is is very sound. Um, and you know, I I certainly can't claim to be, live my life that way. But you know, that that kind of reminded me of what you were saying then about the posting your pages live and all that kind of stuff. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm now trying to unpick what you're. Are you thinking it's a bad it's a good thing? thing? It's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing because it's personal uh, personal accountability, oh. and you know the whole the whole premise behind it is that you ultimately you train your brain to make the right decisions, but you need to give it five seconds, oh. uh, and by counting them backwards rather than forwards, the same as you know I, I talk about this on, on my workshops a lot about you know looking at images upside down or reading words reading sentences backwards, yes. playing chess backwards. Yeah. 
by counting down backwards, your brain has to think more about it. And it, you only need five seconds to make a make a decision, really, ultimately, you know, these like micro decisions throughout the day. And, you know, it will give you enough time to make the right call. Whereas if you just go, oh, you know, I, sh I should put that page live. I don't know. What will other people think it. about it? Yeah. By the time you've done that, yeah. the, the time's gone. You've yeah. started talking yourself out of it. Yes. So it's actually a really, really good Mel Robbins, the five second rule. I'm going to come and steal it from your bookshelf. <laughs> it's in my audio book, actually. Is it? Audio. And I, I listened to it. I listened to it well, before Christmas. I had to go. I had to do a commercial job in Grim, oh, that there, Grimsby, you did and I had a to be there drive. at six a.m. Yeah, I remember talking to you that morning. <laughs> I spent nine hours in the car, I know. <laughs> doing a doing a one hour photo shoot. Yeah, um, and it was all overnight, basically driving. And I listened to the whole thing, and it was it was great. It was really really good. I really enjoyed it. But that ultimately is what it was about. I must get more into audiobooks this year because you're a big Audible fan, aren't you? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Right, love it. Donovan Torres. Black Passport by Stanley Green. Now, this is a book, Kev. Why does this book hold so much value? Question mark. Is it because of the photographer, topic, or because it won't be reprinted? It's now worth over 1,000 quid. Love the podcast. You can say yada, yada, yada. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> yeah, just, just so that we are still saying it. Um, books and value, Kev. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just looking at it on Abe Books now. You can get a good copy of it on Abe Books for £481.30. Oh, snap. A snap, yeah, a snip. A, a snip, snap. even. Snap at a snip. Snap at a snip. You can get it as cheap as £317.81 if yeah. you look for it. Um, yeah, I mean, and this, that's signed versions, by the way. So, <clears throat> I don't know, some books do... I really don't know. I, I, it's, it's quite hard to, to understand kind of book pricing because sometimes yeah. they fluctuate dramatically like proper dramatically um and yes of course books go out of print and you have first editions and you have limited editions you have signed editions all of that kind of stuff have different weightings of value yeah um but ultimately you know it comes down to supply and demand you know it's 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 the the uh, the rule by everything in economics isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i need more alcohol um <laughs> you can't now give that's it you know, if, July. If, if, if there's if there's more demand for it and there's less of them, then you know people are going to sell it higher. Mm. Um, but yeah, it does look like it's a, a pretty pretty meaty one to get your hands on. I'm going to look at. Um, Do you sell much stuff through Abe, or have you ever sold? No, stuff? I've no. never sold anything. So everything you've ever had, every book you've ever had, you've kept. I've given some away. Yeah, I've never sold them. I'm looking for. Yeah, Bob. I'm going to look at Bob Mazza Underground because that at one point was fifteen hundred pounds on yeah. eight books. There you go. It's now you can now get it at a hundred and seventy pounds. Well, anywhere between a hundred and seventy pounds and eight hundred and ninety-five pounds. Oh, right, okay, so quite a difference, probably in quality, isn't it? Have, have books gone? Signed first edition, first yeah. UK edition. Yeah, eight hundred and ninety-five pounds. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, with that book, there was only one edition. Right. So you know, you do have to be a if you are you know serious about book collecting and stuff. It does all come down to the editions and the reprints. If you're interested in in them as an investment, mm. but yeah, so that you know, as I said, that at one point was fifteen hundred pounds on a books, and now a standard first edition, non signed, you can pick up for anywhere between one hundred and twenty and two hundred and thirty pounds. So it changes. Abe Books isn't just for photo books, obviously. I was just looking oh, no, at no, no. Um, yeah, yeah. the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Um, story of a decadent young man. Oh, this is about you, Kev. Who trades his soul for eternal youth. Oh, this, it's about you, Kev. And beauty. First pub <laughs> Oh, suddenly it's not. <laughs> <laughs> first published in 1890 before being expanded and published in book form in 1891. Yada, 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 as you would say. Anyway, 38,150 quid. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a car. Oh, That's a very nice car. Half yes, a mortgage. Yes, half a mortgage. Yeah, well, it depends where your mortgage is. But there we go. Yes, yeah, uh, it was really interesting to look down some of the, the books that are worth a lot of money. None of these I have in my library, sadly. Yeah. There we go. Well, you never know what's in the library, do you, until you start exploring it. That's true. Do you want me to go for another one, since you haven't got yeah, so much in Facebook? All right. I, uh, this one's from Mark Ashworth. I currently Mash. have a... Mash. Mash. It is Mash. I currently have, you wouldn't find mash being eaten by our friend Eddie Abu. 
He doesn't know. I've just looked he at one. He probably would, actually. No, 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 no. Single ingredient. No, he said shitty carbs versus sweet potato. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, he'd have sweet potato mash. Yeah. For sure. Although I think actually he's holding up one of those white rolls you have with burgers, which probably are pretty bad carbs, aren't they, really? Um, anyway, uh, Mark says, I currently have a, a Zenfolio account with around 112,000 images. Wow. In over 1,500 galleries. I now want to change to Pictum. Now, this isn't part... We could have made this cleverly part of the advert, actually, Kev. But question is, do I start with uh, fresh, that is, with pick time, and just have a, uh, new galleries in this and then add any legacy galleries to it, if required? Uh, many of the old galleries simply don't get accessed anymore. I could keep Zen going, which I assume now he's thinking about keeping it going just for the legacy stuff, but I wonder if paying the annual subscription is worth it just for storage. I have all the files and galleries backed up in the studio locally on hard drives. Most of these work, uh, most, most of my work these days rather is studio and commercial. I don't shoot weddings anymore. Naturally, to re upload 1,500 galleries is a heck of a lot of work or money if I were to pay pick time to do it because you can. So, yeah. WWYD, what would you do? Thanks for all your wonderful work. And he has signed it off. MASH. Well, yes. Yeah. So, well, honestly, if if you do not need, and if you've got them all backed up, and you don't the client, you don't need to give a client access to those galleries anymore. I wouldn't bother. No. I would start afresh from um, pick time with the future galleries. Um, however, so I did for my wedding stuff just because for the sake of an, an extra level of online backup, I did pay pick time to do the transfer from Zenfolio, and it's I think it's a dollar a gallery it might be cheaper than that hey, if you're on one of the premium accounts 50 I can't remember, cents but a gallery yeah, it might be 50 cents yeah anyway they did it they just went and did all like whatever it was 450 odd galleries that i had yeah. um, much quicker than i could do it as well because the you know they just they must have some kind of special way of doing it but yeah. When I, if I was doing it manually, it would have taken me months and months and months. So I did that. But I would say, you know, if you don't need to have them online um, for any sake, then don't. And also, it means that you might, if it depends on how many images you're now delivering these days, MASH and, and you know, what you need it for, you can probably get away with the lower um, spaced uh, subscription level because mm -hmm. the subscription levels do fluctuate depending on how much online space you have. I, Neil and myself have the unlimited space do, version yeah. because we have all of our galleries on there and yeah. you would need that if you transferred them all across but perhaps you don't need that much space going forward and maybe if it's commercial stuff you you put them online for two months and then they come off and so you can keep to that lower um i think it's like i don't know two terabytes or something yeah. 100 gigabytes or something i don't really know the answer to the numbers how often <laughs> do you get asked for um, I, it happened to me a it's funny, it's just been a bit of a spate of them o over the last, I don't know, two months perhaps. Oh, I have to keep telling them I'm already married, I'm afraid. No, <laughs> not that question, Kev. Oh, oh sorry. I, I don't get asked that. But no, how often do you get somebody who's, who says, do you remember us? You did our wedding 15 years ago. Have you still got the pictures? I seem to have lost the CD with them on. Mm, no, never. It's never happened. Um, I mean, I do occasionally bump into people who go, oh, you photographed our wedding. Yeah. But none of them have ever come back and asked for, for, for the images. We, we did that re recently in a coffee shop in Newbury. Somebody was looking across and I thought, oh, my, have, I got, have I got a spot on my forehead or something? In the end, uh, he came it's across. A synopsis, said, I expect. Yeah, synopsis, yeah, get treatment for that. Came across, said, do you remember you did our wedding back in whenever the year was? And I, you know, I would, I, instead of that moment where I was just going to say, oh, I knew I knew you from somewhere, which I, I just knew he would think that's a load of old tosh i said i'm so sorry i, d I don't remember but um and, and then we had a conversation at least it came from a, a degree of authenticity and that my memory is awful <laughs> but yeah. um yeah right um have you got time for any more is that it kev is that no i think we've got time for one have you got one that you could possibly serve up from from facebook is there any, uh, anything there okay at all? so i've got one from uh, a year ago <laughs> what this can't be right kev there's got to be is. something going wrong with your facebook no it is i just kind of randomly scrolling we've got we've got stuff that we didn't answer things so there's probably stuff. loads there's a gold mine of questions there's there. a load but the thing is there's no easy way of filtering it you know like on youtube you can filter all the comments and say yeah. show me all the comments i haven't replied to right that's it you have to start a new thread can't do it on here anyway I've lost it now. I've scrolled oh, and it's gone. Kev. Uh, hold on. Let's go back again. All right. Martin Allard. 
Yeah. One year ago. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> a QQ for Kevin regarding tour box. God, that's a blast from the past. I got one last year uh, after hearing how much you enjoyed using it. It's been very useful and helped speed up my editing. Toolbox have brought out a new wireless version, and I wondered if you have tried it, and if so, mm. were there any other real-world improvements worth noting? Mm. For example, the responsiveness of the main dial and Lightroom sliders, as I find moving the dial slightly to get very small adjustments, doesn't always relate to how much the slider moves. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I did use the Toolbox, a little kind of plastic um, device that uh, integrated really well with uh, Lightroom and you know I used it for quite a long time actually and then I, I just stopped using it because I very much just go back to the keyboard and mouse person all the time I've tried all of these gizmos and gadgets Paul Waring even managed to make for, <laughs> make me fork at 500 quid at the photography show on some other fancy wangle thing um, that I never <laughs> used <laughs> And so, yeah, I've gone back to... Is that still the, in your cupboard? Is that, in the, is that in the cupboard of doom? Well, it must be here somewhere. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to try and start to start it today is start tidying up this place a bit. Right. Um, however, so uh, to answer your question, Martin, yes, I did get the wireless version of the tour box. However, it never made it out of the box. Oh. And I did gift it to Paul Waring just before Christmas this year, in fact. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was talking about it and i said oh i got one of them you can have it so i don't know ask paul right we'll, gi- we'll give you his address you can go around and talk to him he can he can post he listens to the show well this is a good test he tells me he listens to the show yeah. paul go on to the facebook group and tell us what you think in the wireless version of the tour box Ooh. if he doesn't post we know he's know it's fibbing yeah um, there is there is one more here. This will be the, the 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 last question of the show today. Then really the um the gauntlet has been laid down. Please, Kev Kev's going to keep his end of the bargain up here. I hope by putting in a new post, and that is where you put your questions for the show. Anything you like, anything, Kev, anything, anything, personal, camera related, obviously, sometimes photography related, whatever, business, web, SEO, social media, confidence, um, personal. Stuff, technology, hardware, software. So that'll be on the new Facebook uh, post. And, of course, you can still keep emailing to click at fujicast.co.uk. Steve Shreve. Is this the Fujifilm X100V expert helpline? Is it, Kev? Hello, you're through to Kevin. And may I help? Uh, For the third time, Kevin, in as many months, my X100V has reset the language and date stroke time. The custom settings and presets don't get reset. But last weekend, I was in the middle of a photo hike and had turned on my camera to shoot and had the language screen. (gasps) Am I hitting it on something Uh, or inadvertently pressing a button? I hope you're not hitting it on something. What do you think, Kev? That's never happened to me. Uh, so if it's if it's resetting, then uh, it's not resetting, it's just the, resetting the language. Yeah. Just the language. Just the language. Yeah, nothing else. And date uh, time, language and date seem... time. So that that's your initial screen that you would get the first time you pull the camera out the box. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, but it does come up with that when you first open it up. But if it if it, if when you switch it on, just the language has changed. Mm. And it doesn't come up and prompt you for that language change. Mm. Then, if it's prompting you for the language change, and I would suspect it's the um, CMOS battery inside the camera that is oh. it needs replacing. But if it's not prompting for that when you switch it on, and it's just changed the language, then that's odd. And and I, yeah, the only way I can think that's happening is you're doing it yourself somehow with a you know some kind of funky finger movement as you're switching the camera off. But if it is prompting you to set the language when you switch it on, then it's the CMOS battery that needs to be looked at. Um, send it off the, to the House of Photography. That battery, though, and they'll fix it. That battery, though, Kev, wouldn't that also control the settings and presets? And they don't get reset. Yeah, it, it should do. Yeah, so that's... That's well, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it is a bit weird. Steve Shreve, I think I know what you need to do. You need to uh, bring along your camera on the 2nd of March to the Fujifilm House of Photography. That's what you need to do. That was and my... we'll all laugh at your Russian-speaking camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's it for the start of the new year. For the, for the start of the new year? For the start of the new year. It's too much eggnog. For 2024, all our plans um, now afoot for the year. Uh, Kev, Kev's going to become... Well, you are going to become the 
Eddie Abu of um, of the photography world. There's no doubt about that. And also, I, I didn't realise it was only a, a month ago or so I found out that you you fully qualified to teach the art yeah. of judo. I, I know it, what, what? In fact, I'm wearing my hoodie right now that says Simon says the judo coach on the back. Do you have a particular name? Is there a Japanese name? For Not so- Kev. No, no Kev like no, Sensei or something. Oh, Sensei, yeah. Are you are you now Sensei? Yeah, Sensei Kev. Not right. Fat Kev anymore. We shouldn't say that. I, thre- I threaten the little kids sometimes. With, like, I kind of sit in the corner like Buddha. So no. if you don't behave yourself, the other senseis are going to send you over and spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough of a threat, I think. Right. Fat Kev just rusting oh, away in the corner of the Kev, dojo. Stop it! <laughs> right, send your questions in. Click at fujicast.co.uk or on the brand new post that Kev will have done by the first of January. Twenty four, three, two, one. I'm going to do it. Done. The Fuji cast is an independent loading zone production email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way